Tonight, a Piers Morgan Tonight exclusive, the wedding of the century, and the gift of a lifetime. I won't let you down. George Michael records a royal wedding song as a present for Prince William and Catherine Middleton. And tonight, he debuts it here exclusively, and you'll hear it just moments from now. And the woman who put the sex into Sex and the City, the lovely Kim Cattrall. Wow, where do we go from here? I don't know, but <laughs> I'm hoping somewhere nice. <laughs> if all you know about her is Samantha Jones, well, you have a lot to learn, trust me. I've gone where few women have gone before. Kim Cattrall on her life, her loves, and yes, on sex. Don't make me into your dirty mind. This is Piers Morgan Tonight. Good evening. The royal wedding, perhaps the wedding of the century, is just two weeks away. And there was a rehearsal today at Westminster Abbey in London with bride-to-be Kate Middleton, her bridesmaids, the page boys and Prince Harry all in attendance. William stayed in Wales with his Royal Air Force unit. But we have our own wedding exclusive tonight, the world premiere of a new song that George Michael has recorded as a gift for the royal couple. And George joins me now to explain what this is all about. George, tell me all about this song. What, what gave you the idea for this? Um, well, it's actually very, very, um, well, the, the idea came to me, uh, last week, actually, about a week ago, that I should, um, that I should perhaps, uh, kind of express my happiness at this marriage in a way, publicly, you know, I was, it was a very beautiful summer's, well, it wasn't a summer's day, but it was an April day that just happened to be like summer here in London, and I, um, I was twittering and I kind of got, um, carried away and decided I was going to make them a, a new uh, track, give everybody on Twitter and, and uh, William and Kate a new track by Friday. So, so I've had a very busy week. And, uh, and the strange thing about this song, actually, considering I think it's probably the best two days' work I've ever done in my life, or two or three days' work, is that um, when I was a child, I dreamt of singing this song. In my, in my imagination, you know, my idea of, of fame at the time was the school assembly hall. I was about 12. And I had this, this record, this Stevie Wonder song, and I used to dream of singing it in the school assembly hall. But I guess this is a slightly bigger, bigger uh, deal than that. <laughs> I mean, we're going to reveal the name of the song a little later when we actually play it for the first time anywhere in the world. And it's very exciting. I can give a little hint that I wooed my wife with this song, and Barack Obama wooed Michelle Obama with this song, and they played it at their wedding. So you have chosen a... Well, an unbelievably romantic, nay, historic song for this, George. Well, I'll take the I'll take the compliment as to, in terms of Obama, <laughs> and I hope your wife doesn't blame me for you guys getting together. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk to George about your relationship with uh, the royal family because I uh, obviously used to uh, run several newspapers in Britain, and during that time, you and Diana were known to be good friends, and and you had uh, lots of fun times with her. Tell me about that. Um, well, I mean, we had a lot of, uh, we spent a lot of time together as friends and, and um, quite often uh, uh, it would be just the two of us and she'd always talk about how much she missed the boys and how she kind of had her reservations about um, doing what her parents had done and sending them to, to boarding school. But, you know, of course they had a, it's not, you know, it's all very well that she would, she loved to um, take them to places like Marks and Spencers and make sure they queued and, and make sure they understood that other people were, were just as important as them. And um, which is very typical of her, but I think she understood that to prepare for a, a royal um, future, you're not really going to be, you're not really going to make it if your education is down at the local comprehensive, you know. So I think the whole um, the whole boarding thing she found very difficult, but uh, was absolutely, I think, a fantastic mother. And I think, um, you know, I, I don't think there's any doubt that that Charles must have done a lot right in the years since he, he um, she died because. How, how else would those two, those two boys have survived so amazingly well? You know, I think they must have a great father as well as having had a, a great mother, although I don't know Charles, you know. Yeah, I, I've met Charles a few times. I completely agree. I think that they've got bits of both their parents, and they, they, I think Charles and Dinah, if she was looking down, would be very proud on the way they've turned out. What was interesting to me, George, is I remember, unless I'm mistaken, that you were once invited at one of these palace private functions to sing for uh, Prince William, and you turned him down. 
Yeah, I did, I know. There was a day that I would have been taken to the tower for that, wasn't there? I, I told people on Twitter <laughs> last, last, <laughs> last week that I, that I was going to the tower, that it was, you know, first left to the lights after Morrison's and uh, uh, over the bridge. And I actually, the thing is, um, it was a very, very awful thing to have to do to say no to him because he's such a lovely uh, man and he was such a lovely kid, you know. Um, but the fact was I, was, I was at a Christmas party that Diana invited me to at Kensington Palace and the only other person I knew there was Elton. And, um, and William came up to me, the, the two of them came up to me, but William asked me and he said, uh, would it be okay if, uh, if you sang a song and maybe Uncle Elton could play the piano? And I was just, I just can't deal with singing in front of small crowds. So I, I, I had to say no, and, and it was, you know, it was excruciating. He was, you know, he, he was very polite about it, but I was thinking, I can't believe I've just said no to probably, you know, the future King of England. But I really was too embarrassed to sing in front of strangers, and, you know. But um, I, remember that, I, I remember that night very, very well. Uh, George, I mean, have you had any contact with the palace in relation to this song that you've done? Um, only, only through a, a mutual friend who gave me. I, I gave him the um, the name of the song that I was going to uh, sing and asked him at least to run it by them because if I was going to make a present, a, um, a wedding gift of it, I thought, you know, there's no point if it's a song they don't like. So I ran the um, song by them, and while I was doing the vocal the other day, uh, I, I got a text from uh, my our, our mutual friend, who basically saying they love the song and uh, that they'd be happy for you to go ahead with it. So, and also, the main thing about doing the song as a, as a gift for them, it's not just a gift for them, it's a gift that they will be able to hopefully turn into uh, many, many donations um, for the uh, Royal Charity, the, the Royal Wedding Charity Fund, dot org, that is, um, you know, which is, which is where they've asked people to uh, give money rather than send presents of, or of any description. Uh, I don't know if that includes all the people at the actual wedding. I don't know if they've, they've given up their toasters and their, you know, their, uh, you know, the, the, the wedding <laughs> list, as it were. But it seems very generously that they have, yeah. So anyway, um, I, I would really like for any of my fans or anybody who, who really uh, enjoys this um, track, <clears throat> if they're going to download it for free, which is, which is there, is absolutely what I want them to do, um, I would love them to go to Kate and William's uh, charity site and make a donation, you know, if they're genuinely happy for these two people, which I think a lot of people are, you know. So, George, obviously the whole world will be watching this wedding in a couple of weeks. What do you think it means for Britain and, indeed, for the royal family that they have such global attention? I think it... I think it... Well, there are two things about this wedding. I think, one, it, it kind of reaffirms that people have no real intention of uh, of trying to get rid of them, which is great. And uh, the other thing is, I think it really kind of... It really shows how, how romantic we are, we still are. I mean, especially in such a dreadful time. You know, there's so many terrible things going on at the moment. So many people struggling in this country and many other countries. But the idea of um, two four-day holidays, because you have to understand, if you don't live in England, that we have two four-day holidays with three days of work in between just about to happen in England, which has never happened, I think, Piers, in, in <laughs> my, uh, my history. What about you? What about you? No. Do you remember no, a time? No, I can never, never remember they did this that. No? I just think, I think, I think people are going to go crazy. I really do. Yeah. I can think of a lot of people who will be taking three I... days off in a couple of, time, day, uh, couple of weeks' time. <laughs> Uh, tell me, George, obviously you knew Dinah uh, better than many people. What do you think she would have made of Kate, who obviously mm -hmm. she, she never got the chance to meet? Uh, I think she probably would have thought there was no good woman good enough for her son, probably like most women, but I think she probably would have loved her, wouldn't she? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I, I think She seems a very sweet girl, doesn't she? Yeah, I think she seems very sweet, and she's also complete... She's a cracker, isn't she? She's great-looking. She's great-looking. <laughs> I think the boy done well. I didn't know you noticed things like that, George. Oh, of course not. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're going to put at the end of the show the details of exactly how everyone watching and your fans back in England in particular can yep. uh, listen to the song and then hopefully make donations to the charity. Uh, it obviously means a lot to you that you've done this. Yep. I'm sure it will to, to William and Kate. I mean, what kind of message would you give to the pair of them on the big day when it comes up? 
Oh, I think they should die. I don't think they need any advice from me, do you? I think the message I would give is that I'm just incredibly happy for both of them. And more, any, more than anything, you know, there was, um, I kind of, I have quite an emotional attachment to, to what's going on here because... I felt so bad um, for those boys when she passed away and having experienced losing my mother about three or four months before that, um, that day was very, very strange for me. And also, you know, uh, when I think of what the devastation of losing my mother, the idea of going through that when you're not even in, into your teens or you're barely into your teens uh, is just, yeah, I just, I can't, just can't, words can't describe how, how uh, much admiration I have for the way that they've both coped with it and especially when you know the, the media has made it so much more difficult for them I'm just incredibly happy for the the, the incredibly happy for William incredibly happy for um, his partner and I'm absolutely sure that Dinah would have loved the whole thing you know and I really hope that she would love this track I have a feeling she would have done she was a big fan and she she had um, a copy of older which is a, obviously a, an album about bereavement about four or five months before it went out into the public eye and she loved it and um, I did once see a documentary where where uh, William was playing that album which makes me think that he, he found it comforting and it was an album about bereavement so I was very touched by that the whole thing has kind of different levels of meaning for me and I'm just incredibly uh, happy that they're they're, um, they're letting me actually you know have uh, some some um, part of the of the benefit site the charity site you know or at least they're letting me share some of the attention for this amazing day in a way to raise money you know which is great well george is very exciting i'm sure they're going to love it we're going to come back at the end of the hour with the world premiere of your song for prince william and kate middleton and we're going to reveal what that song is but coming up for now the lovely kim cattrall